Okay, let's begin, shall we? Uh, is there anybody not speaking Dutch? Okay, then we'll do it in English. Good. Um, for starters, I have a question. Um, who knows what the temperature means in, uh, in an AI context? Please raise your hand. Okay, not so many. Great. Who knows what RAG stands for and why one use it? One hand, two hands. So we're going to learn also of AI. Polite U and U, and some of them are written in a less polite, more familiar manner, the U. So, what they did is they just added to the AI interpolator a derivative, derivative, derivative field and rewrote the entire uh, product database to have like a very similar tone of voice. And you can um, manage that by just putting in a prompt. This way, you can rewrite your entire coffin base or add, uh, subtract, like pull pieces out of it. I'm going to show a short demo. It's always cooler to have demos today. Let me see. How can I see the screen? Okay. Uh, my mouse is here. My text is here. Good. Give me a moment there. Okay. So let's. Start by using uh, this one here. I'm going to dictate the text in Dutch because uh, the, all these language models often properly work for English, but not so good for Dutch. So I'm going to do it in Dutch just to prove that it's cool and it works. Uh, please be silent, otherwise it will screw it up entirely. Yeah, so, uh. Hallo, ik ben Frederik Wouters. Ik ben afkomstig van Leuven en ik kom hier praten over artificiële intelligentie. Dit, sy dit systeem als een dictafoon gebruiken is nu ook mogelijk dankzij artificiële intelligentie. Je zal zien dat de tekst die ik hier voorlees verschijnt op het scherm. Dit is een oude technologie, maar nog steeds zeer cool. Ik ga ook enkele andere voorbeelden geven, zoals het genereren van afbeeldingen en afgeleide content, zoals een podcast of teksten voor sociale media. So, this is the first, this is the text. I'm not going to check it entirely, but what I can do now, my, where is my cursor again? Now I'm going to use the AI integration, the open AI, to add interpunction, because yeah, there's no interpunction into this text, so I'm going to let open AI add the capitals and the points and everything, so it will do that for me. It's the exact same text, only it's like cleaned up a bit. Um, and then, we, of course, uh, you know, prompting more about Vincenzo Stock, uh, you can use all of these uh, AI features there. Um, another thing from the AI interpolator module uh, is, for example, the blog post. I've created a singular one and a one with multiple voices. So you can see here. See, and then it will come. So play with the intervals and uh, the. That you can really. It's just the content of the Drupal Jam website that I listed here, and you see that it generates. Can you see it? It generates a social text uh, based on the content of yours. It's fully automatic. You just save the node and it generates the text. The configuration for that is like this. Let's go to content type, article, match fields. Uh, here, this one. How do you configure it? Well, you say, OK. Uh, and then you put your prompt here. So then it can use these other fields as, a, as an input parameter to generate derivative content. Is this interesting yet? Yeah. Yes? Ooh, okay. Now let's go to the even more interesting <coughs> stuff. Huh? That was the first part. 
I still have half an hour. Excellent. Now we're going to talk about the retrieval of method generation. And there were so many hands when I was asking the number of the exact words. You can, which then also will be things or I'm talking about vector database. What the work looks like, what it's like. So let me hear my syllables from zero to one. It will be introducing a less. So the amount of creativity is not the right word, but feels very similar. And I will be successful today because this is the like a uh, circle here, embedding it. immediately question I have a question about turn into a vector this vector asks to the and this vector stores often as by a million there's many but with the vector, it's a shame you cannot see it. But here, what happens here is you get a number of ranked results. So the top five are related to your query. These results will be then um, used as context for a language model. A language model is like uh, ChatGPT, only we are going to say to ChatGPT, given the question that the user has, Question, textual. Given these articles that we know that are relevant to this question, please, what is that? How long is the crocodile? Well, Of course, uh, the guys from Deep in uh, Switzerland have also built something, Zurich City GPT. Uh, and you see, the system is the same. Ask a question only. Links are in line. This is how you uh, provide the results to your interface. In Belgium, they're also doing it, although I think the user interface might be able to use some improvements here. But the concept is here. Make this one a bit bigger, or, uh, and then I have some questions. So the first question: How old is Drupal Jam already? Apparently, it is in the in the content somewhere. Who knows how old Drupal Jam is? You all saw, of course, uh, the keynote. Yeah, 20 years. Let's see what our uh, GPT says about it. So it gives you the answer and references the content. Once you understand it, it's fairly simple. Uh, like this. There it is. So if you're planning on staying late, you can ask it a question like, when is the last shuttle to the train station at Drupal Jam? I made a typo there, but apparently it understands the last shuttle to Maxim is at 19.30. Uh, so you can ask it questions about what your Google site. This is search API AI, and you can install it with the Pinecone vector database and, um, and ChatGPT, and it works like that. Good. Isn't that good? Cool? There we go. I have some more questions, but I want to give you some more concepts as well. Um, I already mentioned Dragon AI, a really cool tool, but there's also an open source variant. It's called the Dancer. And Dancer is a dedicated drag tool, which you will make generation drag tool, um, where you can index multiple of your <coughs> internal knowledge, for example, SharePoint, Confluence, Google Docs, Bookstack, whatever, Drupal, 
it indexes them, and then you can use them. Uh, uh, you can prompt them. And I'm going to show some concept of that because it's also an interesting system. They have four concepts. They have connectors, document sets, assistance, and models. And the connectors are integrations uh, that you can use. For example, you can index your entire Slack, and then you can ask this dancer everything from your Slack. It, it will just generate answers from things that it finds in your Slack. Or if you have uh, indexed your GitLab, where is GitLab, you can ask it questions about the code. Or you can ask it questions about SharePoint documents. Be careful with SharePoint because apparently people don't manage their permissions properly, properly and sometimes you get more information than you want. <laughs> um, you have also document sets, and that's a cool thing. You can say, okay, I've indexed the public websites of our company and the internal things, and you can give the different sets to different people. Uh, so people can query the internal knowledge base, or if you have a different right, you can only uh, query the external uh, content, which is really cool. There's also multiple assistants in that, sir. Uh, there's a, you can say, okay, just paraphrase me the content, or <coughs> go GPT create it on my content. So if I, I want to configure Google, how do I do it? Use the internal things, but also add in like external content into the mix. Uh, so this is how you want to work with it. Uh, but I prefer to have it as dry as possible. And you can also manage your models. And this is yeah, the cool, the power of open source. Uh, you can manage to use OpenAI or other modules, and you can also use different embedding models, which are interest, more interesting for you. So you can really have the power of the models uh, at your fingertips. And they're very actively working on it, so it's constantly evolving as well. It's in Python, I just say. Um, if you're talking about RAG, you should also talk about virtual assistants. <coughs> Um, um, and why is that? Because the RAC system that you built is really cool, but I'm, I have a client that's called the government, and they say, we don't want to answer questions about suicide. How do you filter that? You could change the prompt, never answer a question about suicide, but people will prompt engineer it and, and it answer your way. But in the traditional bot, um, uh, in the, the, the old style bot, you can also detect intent and have, have this basic intent detection. If you say hello or things about suicide, and you can part them straight away. Do an immediate response and block that response there. This is like the old style chatbot, you know, the old style. If you don't, or if you aren't able to respond with your intents that you have hard with it, the system that we're using, look at the information, stream back your response, answer about the contents. If you don't, Look at the information, and then they can do a handover to the government. And so this is really a layered approach to where the REC lookup could fit into a, like a proper virtual assistant flow. Uh, you could expose it straight away, but there are some people that say that it's risky. <clears throat> um, where is this REC thing also interesting? Uh, in a CRM system. Uh, traditionally, people in a CRM system, end users send emails, a CRM, People are really typing away for hours on these emails to respond to them. There's entire contact centers filled with people that do that. This is their job, and uh, this can be uh, sped up at least. So what happens there is, okay, the email comes in, and then we give this very similar to the chat message, but we only give it in a different way. We say, okay, this is the client's email. We look at the content and we say to the language model, generate a reply email. This is our typical email format and prepare it for the user. The employee then has a different task. He or she can then validate the answer and send it out. You gain a lot of time. Everybody feels hectic. You gain a lot of time if you are just able to validate. Yes, it's good. Send out. You don't have to type anything. But if you don't have to, uh, if, if, if there's something wrong, what happened? Yeah, there's something wrong in the language, uh, in, in the content. So that we then has the task to go back to the content, correct the content, and make sure that the emails are generated properly. There's companies out there that do this fully automatic. No, no more employees in the loop. Stripe, for example, is doing this. But they have, instead of the employee, there's an AI validating how confident are we on the answer, high confidence, and they send the mail automatically. So if you're typing mails to Stripe, the odds are that you're gener re retrieving, uh, receiving a fully generated email from them. 
<clears throat> okay. I often also get told about uh, questions about Copilot. Uh, what about Copilot? And this is one of the things that I'm missing in Drupal. Uh, there's no Copilot integration there, but I think the people from Finalist are here. Are you? Yeah? I know you're strong with the Microsoft stuff. Maybe this is something that you could like look at. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I get a lot of questions from customers about this. And so people are really like really good. But is everybody's experimenting with Copilot. And there is an API, so Drupal could give all their data to Copilot. This means that if you ask a question about Drupal content to Copilot, then it can give you these nice uh, things. And people, companies are massively going on to Copilot. So work hard if you feel like it. Try integration, maybe open source it. This could be very big in the future, I think. On the other side, uh, because everybody's using Copilot more and more, you could also have Copilot embedded into Drupal. So that you, from your Drupal, could use your Copilot to ask questions about all your internal things that are indexed and there anyway. So that would be also a nice suggestion if anybody feels, feels frisky to go for it. Um, okay. Um, important thing to note, all of the things that I was shown here, there's no AI models that I trained myself. Everything was pre-trained. Uh, I also often get questions about what about my important data? Oh, this company information that I have is super important, cannot be shared with the world. Uh, of course it is. So what, what, I, what I tell them, okay, you know the embeddings. There's a plethora of embedding models and you can even run it on your system. Uh, here I show the table of the massive text embedding benchmark. This is, uh, you can find it on Hunky Face and you can find the, the embedding model that's right for you and then run it like the answer on your server. For the vector database, similar, there's a whole lot of vector databases. You see Postgres as an extension for it, Elasticsearch does it. You can uh, use Pinecone in the cloud. There's Vespa, plenty of database. Uh, there's benchmarks in the slides, and you can compare them. Um, but you can, for example, Qdrunt is just a Docker container that you can run in your system. That's very easy to set up. The Drupal module doesn't exist yet for Qdrunt. There is one for Milbus, so uh, feel free to play with that if you want. And then you can run that on yourself as well. The only thing that's left is then the large language model. <coughs> it's a little hard to run it, but I hear some, pe some people in the room have been trying running, running these things on their computers. Uh, not, not just one, multiple. Good. Um, I, in my demo, I, I was using ChatGPT because it's very easy, the integration exists on Drupal.org, but you can also do that with uh, models that you can run on your systems. And maybe if there's even people from MAZ, they are running, uh, I think, Llama and other models that are dropping replacements for uh, ChatGPT in the cloud in Switzerland. So you can, uh, there's many options there. What about the EU AI Act? You cannot talk about AI these days without having something to say about the AI Act. So I add in this slide, very brief, there's a few actors that are involved. There's, oh, it's still in Dutch. This is a copy paste. Oh, my bad. Um, there's a risk, and I think for if you're talking about chatbots, that you're in the low or limited risk. So you probably need a conformity assessment if you want to adhere to the AI Act, and that's about it. But the most important thing is you want to be transparent, trans transparent about what AI you're using and how, it, how it's using the data that you're inputting to your system. So, almost at the end. Um, I have some suggestions and I have some uh, uh, thoughts about the future. Uh, so I already told, yeah, there's no uh, co-pilot uh, module yet, so uh, silent hint. Uh, there's no dancer module yet, so maybe someone feels interested. Um, and some last thoughts. Um, if you ask a classroom of kids around the age of nine what this is, they will say, it's, um, it's a 3D printed safe item. They have no idea what this thing does. If you ask it to people that just started on the workforce, uh, because people from past 2000 started on the workforce, they think it's a, a cassette. A cassette is like a, an audio tape thing, which it is not. Uh, so it's a storage thing. 
What's the point I'm trying to make? The paradigm is changing. People that are using, that are in universities now, except, expect to type in a question and to see the answer. This is the expectation. Uh, the Swiss guys, I'm jealous of them. Right? Their slogan is spot on. Asking a question is the new search. Uh, so this is really, I think this is the, 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 the truth of today. The lucky thing is, you are all on the, on the gold. Uh, everybody here is managing content, so content is the gold of all these AIs, because the better the content, the better the AIs. Um, so you're the shepherds of AI. Well, the GPTs have been trained on the content that you're all exposing via your website. So it's good, it's super important to have well-structured content, to have expose it in a proper way, maybe even, even in a machine-enabled way, but uh, you're on the, on the goal. And the last thing, um, I think there's a divide. Um, a big divide, and you see it with developers, you see it with content editors, you see it in everybody that's using AI or not. The people that are using AI will be more and more efficient. IBM has statistics that their developers are, what is it, 40% more efficient if they're using AI. SAP, the big ERP uh, company, is using 60%. 60% uh, of the code they use for migrations is AI generated. Uh, so all these companies are jumping on that, and the efficiency increases if you're using AI. I'm not saying you should, like a maniac, jump onto AI and do it for everything. But it's certainly valuable to evaluate it for the right things. So it's certainly valuable to, to look at it and be on the right side uh, to use it efficiently. And then uh, I want to uh, show you this slide. In October in London, there will be an AI camp focused around Drupal and AI. So I'm going to be there as well. Um, there's lots of people that are working on Drupal and AI going to be there. You can also join in the Drupal Slack at hashtag AI. Super interesting to follow, um, and that's it. So, and thank you for your attending the presentation. <laughs> and I think we have time for questions, no? Yeah, let's do some. <laughs> Nobody's telling those. Would the companies be interested in like a co-pilot integration? The co-pilot integration? Yeah. Pushing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like, like pushing Copilot into like a the enterprise environment. Like, what what features would a company want? Microsoft is. The question is, what Copilot features are companies interested in? Yeah. What I see is that um, Microsoft is pushing Copilot very hard uh, to all of their customers. They're giving away free licenses. Everybody is playing with it. And so what they're doing is they're just checking the boxes like. Integrate Word, uh, integrate SharePoint, and I think a Drupal integration should be uh, fairly easy as well, so that we can push from Drupal to Copilot. So if their Copilot uh, is there, that they can just query the data from Drupal as well. That will make uh, us more interesting than, for example, uh, proprietary vendors with common measured systems. I, I also see, for example, in the, with the language models, where you do uh, the things the OpenAI models do. Sidecore, for example, they have super crappy uh, LLM <coughs> integrations. Their integration is like you have to comment on the page with a prompt and then it will comment again with an answer. It's super crappy. And I think the, the, the good integration makes all the difference for, for buyers, for companies. More questions? The tech demo you gave, um, the, the translation and all the cool stuff, did they come with a module, the API, AI module? The translation, the, the yeah, OpenAI? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That should follow Vincenzo's uh, talk because he's going to explain which module does exactly what. Uh, so he's going to talk about, I think it's the OpenAI module that does these things. There's the OpenAI the content assistance module that does the, the translation. So what I showed is just a, a plethora of modules. Uh, I think Vincenzo is going more into detail on which module does exactly what and how you configure it and all these details. More questions?
seems like it can use quite a bit of bandwidth if you have a lot of about topic. It's about so so if I understand correctly, I was gonna rephrase the question, huh? So your question is how to feed the correct amount of content to JGPT. Exactly. Yeah. And so this is a, a good question. And so you don't wanna have too much content because they did a study. There is like a statistic on that. The more content you give it, the lower the quality will be. So you, that's a balance you need to find. If you give it only one article, yeah, it will be very limited in the answer. If you give it other pieces of content, the quality will also be bad. So what they suggest is something between four and 10. And this is a, a setting that you can configure. In Drupal, I can show you actually the, the configuration in the module. If I find my cursor again. Configure block. So you see, this is the configuration of this uh, search API yeah, module. You see, these are the, the messages for if there's nothing found. I'm using GPD4. You see, the temperature is on the low side. I'm using max uh, 1,000 tokens. There's a prompt that I give it. Uh, and then here, in the advanced section, you will find that I'm using four results from the different queries. Uh, so this you can play with. You can put put 20 there, but your results will be lower. And so this is a balance that you will need to find. I think, uh, like, within your diagram, you have the part with the change, which is important for this as well. If you, you do not get the entire article, you just get the change of the article that are important for the answer. Because some articles might be really long, and you just want to give them the part that is relevant. They are part of the or something? Yeah. Okay. So that's the reason why you split content into three different types. How do you do that? How do you, how do you get from the date documents to the chunks? Uh, what is the, 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 the module that does it? Yeah. You can buy things. And also, it's actually the AI that helps you do that. Oh, isn't that the next question as well? You got a configuration, how to configure the search API for that, how to put it back links, and the final one. Okay, more questions? Let's do a last question. Yes. What's your best AI talking point when talking to governments to uh, adopt AI? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've found the people that are responsible for the, the clients that I'm successful with, and so the clients that are interested and that go into buying are the people that are. Uh, uh, convinced of the use case, I and mean, for my in, in my experience, that's the people that do like the marketing and are in charge of the website, and then they will pull in the DTO and they will pull in all the other people, but they're the, the pusher, the pushing driver. And then you have to be patient. Yeah, it takes time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I can. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.